Now that we've covered most of the important features individually, it's worth giving a quick walkthrough of the whole Citavi workflow from importing references to tagging their citations microthematically. Here's an interview with N. Catherine Hales that I downloaded from JSTOR. Luckily this has a DOI number that we can easily copy and paste into the search. But if it didn't, we could just copy the title into crossref, then copy the DOI from there. Before clicking the automatic picker link, we want to make sure that the keyword import is turned off under options, so the keywords associated with this reference don't get mixed in with our lexicon. Now that it's imported, we review and edit the reference metadata and apply however many macro thematic categories seem appropriate, in the autocomplete menu or in the popout menu. If I'm creating new categories, the latter window gives me more control of how they are positioned. I'll create a new project subcategory for this tutorial and a new subcategory under Hales for this essay. I'll create a few tasks for reading and excerpting citations. Then I'll attach the PDF I downloaded to this reference in Citavi. But before I do, I'll make sure that the pagination is correct, so my direct quotations show up with the appropriate page numbers. It isn't, so I'll have to correct it in Acrobat Pro or change the page numbers manually. Now I'm all ready to read and cite this document. I often read through text for the first time in portrait mode on a tablet, using a stylus to highlight so that I don't need to spend all my time at a desk. So assuming that I've already made a few highlights, I'll now sit down to extract and tag them. Notice how JSTOR's OCR has messed up the alignment between the page image and the embedded text here, causing me to miss the initials of the interviewer. I could always just delete the highlight and then relink the new one with the citation text, as I showed earlier, or delete both and redo the selection. I'll then proofread the copied text alongside the original and add a few keyword tags from my lexicon. Here she's talking about the relationship between literature and science fiction, so I'll autocomplete my pre-existing literature tag and then quickly enter a new tag for science fiction. She's also asking epistemological questions about what counts for evidence, so I'll make note of that, editing any typos along the way. She mentions living abroad, so I'll use the travel and tourism tag, She's also talking about the difference between learning in the sciences and in the humanities. I know there's a tag for this, but I can't quite remember it. So I'll open the pop-out keyword window so I can search more easily. There it is. I was just missing it because I was searching for the latter terms in the cluster, rather than the first word, scholarship. In the next quotation she mentions posthumanism, which is closely related to transhumanism, so I'll create a keyword cluster for both. She mentions the Renaissance and the Middle Ages, as well as the Enlightenment, Logic, Technology, and Cybernetics, which I know I have clustered somewhere. Oh yes, there under links. This last quotation focuses on her idea of flickering or floating signifiers, so I'll want to tag something about technology and signification. It also mentions Jacques Lacan and psychoanalysis more generally in discussing method. If I remember to do so, I can update my tasks now before transitioning to the knowledge organizer and then add all the quotations to the author category for Hales and the entry I just created for this essay, holding down control to make multiple selections. Then I'll find these citations under Hales and create some microthematic categories for this specific essay. The first one talks about literature and science, the second about the posthuman, and the last, the concept of flickering signifiers. So I can just drag and drop these quotations accordingly, as long as I'm sure to repopulate the essay category afterwards. Obviously these kinds of categories are more useful the more citations there are. I'm not really adding much to the keyword metadata by categorizing them here, and it might not make sense to create subcategories for such a short work. If I wanted to, I could also create a general list of themes to sort all of the citations from Hale's works. It really depends on what works best for the task at hand. If I wanted to draft an essay with these citations instead, I could condense them into one category add in my paragraph ideas and section markers, export them using the Publication Assistant, and then convert the placeholders by selecting Format Publication, so long as I'm on a non-US network. Alternatively, I could use the word add-in to do more or less the same thing, if a bit more slowly. This concludes our exploration of Citavi as the most powerful technology of memory currently available for text-based scholarship. There are still plenty of enhancements worth making to the workflow demonstrated here, but we can now see how Citavi gives us the most power to experiment with our own microthematic metadata, how we might use it to build a personal knowledge base, and how to best manage our metadata as the knowledge base expands in its breadth and depth of information.